welcome to this lecture number 6 uh, of solar solar photovoltaics course uh, principles technologies and materials so we'll just do a quick recap of uh, lecture number 5 in the previous lecture we looked at uh, essentially methods to correct for time so we looked at time correction concept of lstm local solar time local time so basically how to correct for actual solar noon and the one which is predicted by your watches so and these are nothing but geometrical corrections based on the location where you are the longitude latitude uh, because the whole country is uh, by clock is in one time zone whereas the actual time at a given location may be different from what is given uh, in in your in your watch and that is because uh, um, because of uh, geometrical corrections in because the language for example the longitude of kanpur is different from longitude in calcutta so obviously sun would actually rise earlier in calcutta than in kanpur so although uh, calcutta and kanpur the 12 o'clock in clocks will be at the same time but the noon will happen at the different time so you need to correct for these discrepancies and uh, we also looked at uh, we also initiate we also got initiated into solar uh, geometry. So, we looked at uh, things like zenith angle, we looked at solar altitude angle, we looked at various azimuthal angles and so on and so forth. So, uh, we were we when we finished we were just looking at the geometrical relationships for a inclined body. So, let me now switch over to the PPT. So, we were looking at this kind of geometry where a surface that you want to use is inclined to the horizontal and uh, this makes an angle beta with respect to the horizontal and the arrow uh, pointing this direction is the south arrow and uh, uh, so. Uh, so, south is in this direction and north obviously would be opposite of that and uh, this is the vertical to the horizontal and this is the sun. So, sun ray is coming at certain angle to the surface. So, sun ray comes at certain angle to the horizontal, but since the surface is that beta angle with respect to the horizontal, you need to make that correction in the angle for sun ray on the horizontal surface. So, that beta have to be subtracted uh, from the total overall angle and then, so this is the angle between the uh, vertical and the sun which is the zenith angle then we have normal to the surface so no, the, there is a difference between the vertical and the normal to the surface vertical is vertical to the horizontal whereas normal to the surface n is the normal to the surface so which means the angle between normal and vertical is going to be beta right because the angle between the surface and horizontal is beta so these two angles are going to be beta and then you can also define some other angles the angle between sun ray and the normal is theta angle between uh, the projection of sun ray on the horizontal and its angle with the south is called as gamma s solar azimuthal angle the angle of surface is normal proje its projection on the horizontal and its angle with the south is called as gamma. So, based on variety of these angles you can define this triangle a b c and by the equivalence of in the geometry you can see that angle between B C and A B will be gamma S minus gamma because this angle is gamma S minus gamma. So, that angle will become gamma S minus gamma. So, if you do now, so we will not get into details of uh, trigonometry, but if you apply the law of cosine, you will get cos theta relation as cos theta is equal to cos theta z cos beta plus sin theta z sin beta into cos gamma S minus cos minus gamma. Now, you can represent the whole thing in, in a different way in this kind of uh, with respect to earth being a sphere and uh, sun being somewhere around it. Uh, so, which is uh, sort of a legitimate uh, design and uh, again uh, using the equivalent law of uh, cosines, you can determine cos theta z will be equal to sin theta sin phi plus cos delta cos phi cos omega. So, you can see that in the previous one we had relation for cos theta, now it is a relation for cos theta z which is a zenith angle and uh, law of science will again give you relation. So, the idea is to get to expression where you can you require minimum number of angles to, to make predictions. 
So law of sines will give you sine omega gamma s which is the solar azimuthal angle in terms of omega, delta and theta, theta z. So, you see some of these angles are easy to work out. Uh, for example, zenith angle be, can be found, out, uh, found easily and uh, delta is the declination angle and omega is the hour angle. So, these three angles are easy to de decipher whereas solar angle, azimuthal angle is not easy to decipher. So, so, you would like to replace the quantities which are not which are not given easily by the quantities which are available to us. So, that is why these uh, three expressions have come into being. Now, you just simplify these expressions. So, for a vertical surface with uh, beta is equal to 90 degree, okay. this simplifies to cos theta simplifies to sin phi sin delta cos gamma cos omega cos phi cos de sin delta cos gamma sin beta and another term in including cos delta sin gamma and sin omega. So, you can see here phi is the position dependent term, delta is the declination angle which is day dependent term, uh, gamma is the angle of surface normal with respect to north south. So, that you may have to define, omega is the hour angle. So, these three, these, this angle, uh, so phi, delta and omega are easily known whereas, gamma you would know because of orientation of surface. Okay. So, that also could be known. Similarly, for a horizontal surface, this even simplifies further because then beta becomes equal to 90 degree, uh, sorry 0 degree. So, all the uh, cost, cost sin beta terms become sort of 0. So, as a result, now this cos theta is only sin phi sin delta plus cos phi cos delta cos omega. So, here everything is easily determinable. Phi is the position dependent term, delta is the declination angle, phi is again position dependent, delta is the declination angle and omega is the hour angle. So, this is how you can do for various things, you can have a for you can you can simplify for a, sur for a surface which faces south. For a surface which is faces south, the projection of normal coincides with the south line. So, as a result gamma becomes equal to 0. Again this equation gets simplified to cos theta is equal to sin delta sin phi minus beta plus cos delta cos omega cos phi minus beta and beta is the angle of inclination, phi is position dependent term, day, delta is day dependent term and omega is time dependent term. You can also further simplify for a vertical surface due south. So, in this case beta is 90, gamma is 0. So, the, this again gets simplified cos theta term. So, basically the idea is to determine cos theta. What was cos theta? Theta is the angle between the sun beam and the, so if you go back to previous picture, theta is the angle between the sun beam. Uh, sun beam and the normal to the surface. Okay. So, basically this is what we are interested in determining. So, if you have an inclined surface which does not face south then it gets complicated, but if you have a if you make simplifications like surface facing south or surface being horizontal surface being vertical these becomes little bit simpler. So, these are approximations one can make however, there is nothing there is you can also determine for a surface which is at certain angle. So, in that case you need to know delta gamma. So, we can also define two more few more things sunrise, sunset and day length. So, for a horizontal surface one can find out what is the hour angle corresponding to sunrise or sunset and for this you determine theta z to be equal to 90 degree in the, in the previous equation. So, cos omega s is equal to minus tan phi tan delta or omega s can be written as cos inverse minus of tan phi tan delta. And this value is positive for sunrise and negative for sunset. So, since omega s is positive for sunrise, negative for sunset, day length can be found by omega s minus of minus omega s. So, basically it becomes 2 omega s. So, if you look at the whole equation, day length is s max is equal to 2 divided by 15. So, 15 is nothing but you know 360 degrees in 24 hours, this 15 is it is in hours basically. So, 2 if you look at the whole thing 15 into s max is equal to 2 into cos inverse minus tan phi tan delta 2 into cos cos inverse mi minus tan phi tan delta is omega s. So, this is 2 of omega s equal to 15 into s max 15 is coming because of calc because you want to calculate it in hours if you did not want to calculate it in hours you, you can eliminate 15. So, maximum day length is 2 divided by 15. So, 2 omega s divided by 15 essentially and you substitute omega s from the previous equation. So, all of this is valid for northern hemisphere. If you need to go for southern hemisphere, you need to make appropriate corrections in the equations which are simple. So, between, so for an inclined surface, uh, so this is for a horizontal surface, but for an inclined surface between March 21 and September 21, 
sir so you can see as the sun moves sun is so you are going from sun goes from east to west but in winter it's more southish in the summer it's more northish its sun is mostly on top in the summer so it moves to the north of east west as a result between 21st and september 21 the equation gets modified as if for inclined surface omega s is equal to cos inverse minus of tan phi minus beta into tan delta so you need to consider the beta thing into account for this period so for example so let's let's see for certain position sunrise and sunset so between uh, so you can say for june 21st and december 21st let's say gamma is equal to 0 which means surface is facing due south and beta is equal to 10 degree and let's consider mumbai whose location is 19 degree 7 uh, minutes north and 72 degree 57 minutes east okay so phi is given as 1907 so phi is 1907 which is 19.12 degree for june beta is equal to 10 degree you can find out delta delta is 23.45 sin of 360 by 365 into n plus 254 and and then we have this uh, uh, so declination angle if you put in the value it will turn out to be so this will be your delta value then omega can be calculated as cos inverse minus of tan for inclined surface phi minus uh, beta so this is phi this is beta tan of 23.45 and so as a result omega is minus plus minus 94 degree for sunrise and sunset okay so this can be converted to day length and for december you can make the similar calculation for december uh, it would be cos inverse tan 19.12 degree usme se you can, in that you can reduce you can eliminate the beta so beta goes off and tan of minus 23.45 so this comes to be Plus minus eighty one point four. So you can now look at the width day length. Obviously, you can see that two omega will be larger in case of June than in case of December. So you can see that your day length will be higher. So if you write here, so if you write here, s will be equal to two divided by fifteen uh, omega s. So you can see that this will be larger in this case. Whereas if you go to next one this is a smaller as a result smaller day length is obtained for december so these are simple calculations you can do for wherever you are now let's look at another parameter which is called as local uh, apparent time which is called as which is basically standard time plus minus 4 into lambda standard minus lambda actual and lambda is nothing but the longitude plus equation of time correction that we looked at earlier okay so local apparent time is equal to standard time plus minus 4 into lambda standard minus lambda actual plus equation of time correction and so if you now look at mumbai again mumbai is longitude latitudes are given let's say it's ist 14 hours 30 minutes on 1st of july and indian standard uh, lambda is 82.5 degree east so if you look at equation of time correction it is minus 4 minutes so a standard time is given according to this because you this is your india let's say not very good map but right so mumbai is somewhere here latitude of la, longitude the geometrical uh, parameters of mumbai are different with respect to gmt plus gmt plus 5530 right now this gmt for 530 will correspond to certain lambda value okay because longitude of 530 would be some from the middle of india which is about nagpur okay so this would be your standard lambda so this is lambda standard whereas mumbai is here this is lambda mumbai right so there is a difference here so equation of time correction if you go to previous equation in the previous lecture it will turn out to be minus 4 minutes as a result the local apparent time will be 1430 hours minus 4 into 82.5 standard lambda minus the actual lambda which is 72.85 plus minus of 4 minutes and if you work this out it comes out to be 13 hours 47 minutes so your the clock shows the time of 1430 hours but actual time in mumbai is 
13.47 hours. Similarly, if you do the same calculation for Arunachal Pradesh, the actual time will come will be ahead, right? So, if you look at 14.30 hours time, it will become 15.30 for example in, in case of Arunachal Pradesh. So, this is how time corrections have to be made for calculating the actual time. So, this is basically what we have discussed so far is related to the time corrections uh, and geometries and so how to calculate the angle of solar radiation with respect to a surface that is what we have done and we have looked at the time corrections which will help us in calculating the radiation uh, at appropriate time. So, these are the two things you need the direction and the time. Now, let us look at how to calculate the now, what we will do is that we will do determination of not determination actually it should be measurement ok. Measurement of solar radiation. So, solar radiation can be defined in various fashion and lot of these most of these methods of determining solar radiation at a given location on a given uh, day given time are mostly empirical in nature. So, we will not look at all the models due to paucity of time we will only look at a few of them. So, the way you define solar radiation measurement there are methods of there are ways in which different uh, people have done. So, for example, first method to decide solar radiation is monthly average uh, daily global radiation. Now, here the trick is you have to measure direct radiation, you have to measure diffuse radiation and then it can be averaged over a month, it can be averaged over a day, so, so on and so forth. There are various models for various definitions. So, monthly average daily global radiation, monthly average daily diffuse radiation and monthly average hourly global radiation, then we have monthly average hourly diffuse radiation and then we have daily and hourly diffuse radiation and then we have hourly global direct which is also called as beam radiation and diffuse radiation. in cloudless skies. So, let us first look at monthly average daily daily global radiation. So, in this case the first attempt was made by somebody called as angstrom, he said H g bar is divided by H c bar which is A plus B into S bar divided by S max. Now, what are these quantities? Now, H g bar is basically monthly average of monthly average of daily global radiation on a horizontal surface at a given location and this is in kilo joule per meter square per day. Okay. Similarly, H c bar is is monthly average of daily global radiation on a horizontal surface at the same location on a clear day. So, the so essentially H g bar it is equal to H g bar on a clear day 
okay. This is on a general day, this is on a clear day, absolutely clear day, again the same uh, thing. S bar is equal to, S bar is def defined as monthly average, monthly average of sunshine hours per day at the location. Okay. So, this is an hours and then we have S max. So, you can guess what it would be. It would be monthly average of maximum possible sunshine hours at a given location that is day length on the horizontal surface. Theek hai? So, monthly average maximum possible sunshine hours at the same location on a horizontal surface and then A and B are the constants which are empirical constants used for data fitting. So, this is mostly empirical and you can again you can now there were later some changes which were made. So, for example, this H G was uh, H C was it was not very easy to calculate H C bar which is maximum average of daily global radiation horizontal surface on a clear day it was not very easy to mention. So, H C bar was later replaced with. So, you can say H C bar replaced with another quantity H naught and what is H naught? Monthly average of monthly average of extra terrestrial radiation which would fall on a horizontal surface. So, many of these quantities are changed because previous quantities were not easy to obtain as a result changes are made. So, essentially you can do the calculations and work out various values. So, for example, for Pune in India, the value of S bar to S max was uh, S bar max was about 0 0.25 to 0 0.49 with A and B value being uh, A being 0 0.3 and B being 0 0.51. Okay. We can do for various other locations A and B values for for example, place like Bangalore. Bangalore would be about uh, 0 0.18, 0 0.64. If you look at a place like Jodhpur, Jodhpur will give you a value of 0 0.33 and 0 0.46 and if you look at something like Delhi, Delhi would be 0 0.25 and 0 0.57. So, these data you can uh, obtain in literature. So, there is a paper in solar energy 22407. 1979. So, this is the volume number, this is the page number, this is the year number and this is the name of the journal. Now, so this is uh, what we defined here was this was uh, monthly average daily global radiation. So, how do you work out now H naught? This H naught is the monthly average of extraterrestrial radiation that would fall on the on a horizontal surface. Uh, H naught is uh, uh, given by this equation 12 divided by pi into I S C which is the solar constant to 1 plus 0 0.033 cos of 2 pi n divided by 365 and then you integrate it over whole day. So, this is essentially cos theta term integrated. So, sin phi sin delta plus cos phi cos delta into cos omega over d over this whole time. So, the cos phi term integrated over the whole day and that that is what you will obtain for a given location and this would turn out to be omega s sin phi sin delta plus cos phi cos delta 
into sin of omega s this is what this term will turn out to be and uh, if you do the so this will be this will become 24 by pi into isc into the term that you have here and this term okay 24 and this can be simplified by I mean for a given month uh, it was found by scientists that you can find an average day for a month. So, uh, so if you want to find out the monthly average you can just choose that particular day. So, for example, uh, for so you can say average day for a month and this average day falls mostly in the middle of the month. not exactly middle it changes. So, for example, for January it is 17, for February it is 16, for March. So, of course, this has come after empirical data fitting. Okay. So, it is not just you take 15th of January or 15th of Feb. They are, so, calculations are made for the whole month, measurements are made for the whole month and then average out the values and see which day corresponds to the average of it. So, this is what various values would be like. Whereas, for December for example, it becomes uh, 10 and uh, for June it will June for June it is 11th and June December show a bit of deviation because June and December are months where you have longest day and longest uh, uh, night as a result there are a bit of deviations in these two months, but other months show fairly uh, the average day is fairly in the vicinity of 15th of every month. So, you, if you want to calculate the monthly average radiation let us say in Baroda, Baroda in March. Okay. So, for Baroda A is 0 0.28 and B is 0 0.48, the average day is 16th. Okay. On 16th I can calculate was is H naught. So, so, H naught for 16th needs to be calculated and this works 16th works out to n is equal to 75, okay, 75th day of the year. So, delta is 23.45 into sin of 22 pi divided by 365, you can say 360 divided by 365 into 75 plus 284 this will give you an angle of minus 2.42 degree. Omega s since it is before 21st of March this is cos inverse minus of 10 phi 10 delta and this will be uh, nearly 89.02 degree which is equivalent to 1.554 radians. Okay. So, I can find out S max which is 2 by 15 into omega S. So, this is 2 by 15 into 89.02 and this turns out to be 11.87 hours. All right. H naught can be found by 24 by pi into I S C which is equal to 1.367 kilowatt per meter square into 3600 okay 3600 is the correction you can see it is for hour into seconds okay and then you have 1.033 cos of 360 by 365 into into 75 which is n value and this is multiplied by Omega s that is 1.554 into sin of 22, sin of 22 will so if you look at the equation sin phi which is the latitude. So, sin of 22 which is the latitude for Baroda into sin of minus 2.42 which is delta plus cos of phi which is cos 22 into cos of delta which is minus 2.42 degree into cos of omega x which is 89 point sorry sin of omega s which is 89.02 degree and if you 
do the calculation this will turn out to be 34206 kilo joule per meter square per day okay so if you now make the calculation of hg bar which is the daily global average daily global radiation which is h0 into a plus b s bar divided by s max bar this will be 22718 kilo joule per meter square the daily global radiation for a given location in baroda in the month of march is 22718 kilo joule per meter square per day so i hope you can understand the calculation it's a fairly simple calculation that uh, we have seen here so uh, you can also calculate the monthly average diffuse daily diffuse radiation so so this is again so hd bar divided by h again a empirical equation hd bar is equal to 1.390 minus 4.027 hg bar divided by h not bar plus 5.531 hg bar divided by h not bar square minus 3.108 hg bar divided by h not bar to the power cube so this is the daily diffuse radiation and this is the daily global radiation monthly average daily diffuse radiation monthly average daily so it's again a fitted amount fitted equation and this parameter hg bar divided by h not is called as monthly average clearness index basically it makes sense so if higher the hg bar is more this ratio is going to be which means the day is more clear right when the day is more clear your global radiation is going to be higher in number and when this parameter is higher as a result your uh, your h diffuse radiation also tends to be smaller in amount this equation has been modified for india for india you can use a little bit uh, modified equation hd bar divided by hg bar this is uh, 1.411 minus 1.696 into hg bar divided by h not bar this is done by modi and sukhasme so based on the the values that you obtain for hg bar and h not bar for a given day you can calculate what the diffuse radiation is going to be okay so i mean from the previous equation you can just make the calculations so if your h hg bar is 22.718 kilo joule per meter square per day and your h not bar was 3220 3420c kilo joule per meter square per day you can calculate what your hd bar is going to be hd bar is going to be 6465 kilo joule per meter square per day so obviously if you increase the value of hg bar your hd bar will come down and right so this is what uh, and direct radiation is nothing but hg bar minus ht bar okay so this is total radiation global so this is global this is diffuse so your direct or beam radiation is global minus diffuse so so 22718 minus 6475 will be the direct radiation so idea is in most cases to so i mean it's on in your hands but if we have higher amount of uh, beam radiation this number will go up as compared to diffuse radiation on a clear day so similarly there are models for monthly average hourly global radiation monthly average hourly diffuse radiations and uh, i will not get into details of those so we can say month so models for
monthly average uh, hourly global radiation and monthly average uh, hourly diffuse radiation. So, we cannot cover all of these in this uh, course. So, I would request that you go to this uh, book by I do not remember the exact topic as of now, but if you look at the first lecture, in the first lecture I have provided the book by Sukhatme and Nayak. I think it is solar energy or solar thermal storage something like uh, the name of the title is, but anyway you can find it out. It is a book by Sukhatme and Nayak, the first or second chapter of that book, uh, first few chapters of that book discuss uh, these models for a daily average and daily diffuse radiation for given locations in India. So, it is a very nice uh, calculation. So, if you, uh, so uh, let me just uh, give you the values for example, the values of uh, if you do on hourly basis the H g bar turns out to be 23,564 kilojoule per meter square per day and H naught H d bar will be 7820 kilojoule per meter square per day. This is for, for example, for uh, New Delhi. Uh, on uh, the April 15th, 15th April um, okay, for a horizontal surface. So, you can, so again there are empirical equations in which you need to uh, provide the data, again you need to calculate what the declination angle is going to be, what the value of uh, our angle omega s is going to be, what is the angle that is what is the day length that is going to be similarly you need to calculate what is the extraterrestrial that is. So, equations are fairly similar it is just that they are they have different empirical fitting constants. So, as a result they give you slightly different values. So, you can go to this book by Sukhatme and Nayak and uh, read more about these models which provide these values. So, uh, this sort of uh, gives you an idea of uh, how do you determine. Uh, so, this is for a horizontal surface most of these calculations. So, if you want to, so if you know that your radiation is coming at certain angle, so you know what is a global radiation, you know what is a diffuse radiation. From this you can find out the direct radiation. Now, you know direct radiation comes directly. So, for a horizontal surface it is fine, but for an inclined surface you will have to take cos theta off or whatever the angle uh, that the normal and the vertical that they make with each other. So, if it is cos, if it is cos beta you will have to modify that with cos beta. Okay. So, that went amount of drop in the direct radiation that will happen for a inclined surface, but the diffuse will remain same diffuse does not have angular dependence as a result diffuse will remain, remain fairly the same. So, what will happen is that your global radiation for inclined surface will change as compared to that for a horizontal surface. Of course, these values are time dependent as well because, uh, uh, because different times will give you different. So, there will be times at which an inclined surface will give you higher radiation. So, that is why surfaces are kept inclined because they, they tend to take out the average value for the day. Horizontal value will get horizontal surface will get mass maximum radiation only for the uh, when the sun is at zenith. So, uh, so, that is why you will see every solar panel is inclined to the surface at certain angle to average over the whole day in terms of receiving maximum solar radiation or average value of solar radiation which is nothing but AM1 1.5 g. So, uh, there are models in the same book for tilted surfaces also and so on and so forth that you can read in the books. So, how do you do the radiation measurement? Radiation measurement is done by it is done by uh, basically the first is based on thermoelectric effect. And for this we use a, use a equipment called as pyranometer and uh, this can measure both global and diffuse. Okay. And the second one is called as pyre heliometer. Okay. These are the two equipments which are used for measurement of radiation which are uh, useful. So, this is what 
a brief discussion on solar radiation, solar geometry and solar uh, radiation measurement was. So, this is, uh, this is essential to know how the solar radiation is measured for a given surface uh, at a given location. In the next class, in the, in the next lecture onwards, we will move on to uh, the fundamentals of uh, semiconductors which are essential to, uh, to know, to understand the p-n junction uh, characteristics which are, p so p-n junction is nothing but a solar, uh, solar cell uh, architecture. So, and since p-n junction is made of p-n n type semiconductor, we need to know how the carriers move after the radiation absorbed within a solar cell. Okay? So, we will discuss that in the next class. Thank you.